<laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I want to talk to you a little bit about one word. I know Jenny um, shared, I think last week, just kind of her experiences with um, the one word process. And, um, and so I wanted to just kind of share with you, I want my light soon, so I'm weird up there. Okay. It's like sagging. It's the end of the year. My light's like, oh, we're done. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to share with you kind of the process of how you can discover your one word, okay? Um, and one of the things that's so cool about about the about one word is that it's kind of like a trigger word, okay? Um, everybody talks right now. Everybody talks about you know things that are triggering, right? This is a good trigger, okay? This is not an anxiety trigger. It's not something that's going to cause you trauma, right? This is a good trigger to snap you back towards your goals, towards whatever it is you want to accomplish, um, whatever sort of thing like that, right? So um, one of the reasons why a lot of times resolutions don't work is because they're so big, right? You know, you put on your, you that you want to lose weight. Well, that is more than a one-step process, right? That is like, okay, well, what does that mean? It means I need to move my body more. It means I need to eat better. I need to do this. I need to do that, right? And so it's a multi-step process that a lot of times takes a long time to get there. And in the meantime, you're getting a little bit overwhelmed by the whole process. And then about two weeks in, you're just like, I'm done. This just isn't my year. I'll try again in 2025, right? And that's not what we want, right? That's not what we want. Um, we want it to be um, to be much more focused, right? And so when it comes to the one word, you're looking for a word that is maybe like an attribute, you know, and, and it may have something to, it's multifaceted, right? It has to do with your business, but it has to do with your life. Maybe it's maybe it's some sort of um, a quality that you want to lean into a little bit more this year. So um, so I'll tell you a little bit about one of my words, uh, one of my first words, um, as we kind of go a little bit further into the process. But, you know, one of the things that is so powerful about the word, and we're going to talk about this, is um, is when other people know that word as well, they can use it to help trigger you as well in a good way. So if you are kind of like going having a moment. We've all had these moments. I was just telling a friend the other day, I was like, well, I had my first meltdown of December the other day <laughs> of all the overwhelm and all the things I need to do. Right. And so we all have those moments. And it's nice when you have a friend who knows this word that can help kind of pull you back into the moment. Um, and so, and that's something that you can do, but also you can put it all around you. All right. And we're going to talk about that. So how, why the one word works is, um, is it develops uh, simplicity in a complex world, right? We live in a very complex world right now, and we all are struggling to like simplify our lives, our routines, our, our all the things that we need to do, right? And so, um, but it also helps you find focus and purpose in your business and in your life. And, um, and a lot, and, and that's one of the things I love most about Tupperware in this business and the journey that I've been on in this business over the years. Sorry, <laughs> there it goes. Um, the journey I've been on this business over the years is that a lot of the things that we train on for you to be successful in the business are very much so things that can be applied to your personal life, right? To your parenting, to your relationships, to your um, just you, right? To improve you. And it's all about, you know, leaving you better than you were when you came, right? And that's the, I think about that all the time. And I have people that joined my team who they may not have made the great numbers. They may not have done anything like that, but they've said, thank you to me because of Tupperware. I had the courage to get up and and do something at my church. You know, there was somebody I knew and she needed to get up and give a little mini speech at the end when they do announcements, right? And she was like, because of Tupperware, I was able to do that. And I was like, I love that, right? Because a lot of the things that we accomplish in this business can't be measured in numbers, right? You can't measure personal growth in numbers, right? Would that be great? Yeah, sure, but it doesn't really work that way. So we have to like take a look and see how far we've come, right? And so it helps you find that focus. Um, it also helps you gain clarity and passion, right? And passion for, for change, passion for improving, for life, for business, all those things. Um, it helps you experience dramatic life changes and success, kind of like what I was talking about, right? And it helps you develop a discipline for life. 
And, um, and I, and I love that. I think we all need to be a little bit more disciplined in our life. I think we all need to be a little bit more disciplined on what we will and will not tolerate in our life, what we will and will not settle for in our life. Right. Um, and I, there's a song. Uh, so when I first was like coming up in the business, the first couple of years in the business, right. Um, Sugar Land was really big. Right. And there was that song, not settling. Right. And that was one of my favorite songs because I was like, I'm not settling. I'm not settling in my life for anything less than everything. Anything that I, you know, like I want the best. I expect the best. I'm not saying I need the best name brand things like that. I'm saying in my life, I got one chance at this. We all have one chance at this, right? Don't you want it to be the best? Don't you want the majority of your days to be really great days? Yeah, we all have stretches that we go through that was just like, I can't find a good day to save my life, right? We all go through that. So if you're in that valley, you're not alone. You're not alone. We've all gone through it. But don't you want more? Don't you want more happiness? Don't you want more um, simplicity, right? <laughs> simplicity in your life. Um, I see a couple of people nodding. All right. So here is the one word process. And this can help with all of this. Like I said, a lot of times people's words are kind of attributes or something that they want to step into um, in the new year, right? To improve themselves, their life, their business, their everything. And so the first thing you want to do is you look in, right? You prepare your heart. Um, you want to take action strate by strategically disengaging from those the hectic pace of life so that you can have that quiet moment to look in, right? And I know it's really hard and some of you are in a really, really hectic time of life. And I remember when I first started, my kids were two and three and I could just like barely function, right? I was constantly just chasing them around, feeding them, changing them, and then trying to get them to bed so that I could just like think for a minute and try to work a business, right? And so I totally understand that. And I always say I grew my business 15, five minutes, sometimes at a time, right? And, but that's all you need. You need that quiet time. Now, if you have the luxury of being able to create that quiet time and create a situation, you know, me personally, I like a lot of ambience. That's who I am. And it's so funny. My daughter is going to laugh because I know she can hear me, but I walked downstairs yesterday and she was studying and we have those like electric candles that have a little like remote and she has them like all around while she's studying and I laughed I said wow you got some ambiance going on here she's yeah I needed to calm down <laughs> and I'm like oh my god that's so me right <laughs> and so if you know that about yourself you create that ambiance for yourself or even just go to the coffee shop you know you're running errands you're going to the grocery store or whatever if your grocery store has a little cafe in it go in and sit down for five minutes sit in your car for five minutes whatever it takes to get you to that serenity to be able to have a clear thought that is when you can look in, right? You can look into your heart. By eliminating noise and clutter properly, um, it properly prepares your heart um, and unplug and create that space to ask these questions. What do I need and what's in my way? That's a big question, okay? What's in my way? It might be a person and it might be you. Okay. I know for me, a lot of times it's me. I'm the person in my way of getting what it is I want. All right. So look in is the first step. So um, look up. All right. Discover your word. You know, once you've prepared your heart, you're ready to receive your word. Plug in and listen up. The process of looking up is meant to be more peaceful, not stressful, and let your word come to you. And, and a lot of times, um, a lot of times uh, what I, what I notice is when I start thinking about my word and I kind of like look in my heart, right. And then a couple words come to mind, right. A couple words kind of come front of mind and I'm like, maybe it's this. So I jot down these words that pop into my head. Then I start noticing how often this word comes in front of me. Right. And um, sometimes it comes to you as you're talking to friends and they, they keep repeating this word to you. And you're just like, God, that's so random that they're repeating this word to me. And this is one of the words on my list, right? Or you start noticing it in all the street signs, right? Maybe, maybe you're just like, it's one of those signs on the side of a building, right? But there's the word and you just, you know, your eyes kind of gravitating to that word. That could be your word, right? Maybe it's showing up to you in quotes. Maybe you're reading books and you're just like, it just keeps coming over and over and you're just like, oh my God, there's that word again. There's that word again, you know? And so that's what it can be for you, right? 
I know um, Pam, one year when she was working on her word, where she's sitting actually right now in her kitchen, um, there was a, a fortune cookie behind her and she was, and so she was just doing work or whatever. And she had kind of her word in the back of her head. And then she, this fortune cookie had been sitting there for a while. And then she was like, I'm just going to open up this fortune cookie. And she opened it up. And you know, what was in that fortune, that one of those words that was on her list. She's like, Oh, there it is. That must be the word. This is sit on my counter this whole time. So it's something as silly as that, right? And then you want to look out. You want to live that word. Once you kind of narrow it down, this is when you start telling people about it. This is when you put it front of mind. Make it the screensaver on your phone. Make it the screensaver on your on your desktop or your, you know, uh, whatever, whatever device you use, your iPad. It, write it out in pen and paper. Listen, if you're not digital and you're just kind of like, oh my God, I can barely answer my phone, Ellen, let alone change my wallpaper. It's okay. Take a Sharpie and write it down and put it with tape on your wall. It doesn't have to be that fancy. Any of you watch Ted Lasso, right? He takes the sign and just writes believe and has masking tape holding it on the wall. And that is the vision he has for the team. It's the same thing. Or you can be super fancy and go to like one of those painting places and like paint your word and get all crazy right so it's up to you but the biggest thing you can put it in a post-it note right keep it simple but try to put it around you as many as places as possible and tell the important people in your life so that they can bring that word back in front of you when you need it so when you see that word it kind of snaps you right back right so the first time we were doing this I was like, oh, one word. I love the idea of this. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. It's such a new, fresh idea for me. I love it, love it, love it. And everybody's coming up with these like super sexy words, right? They're just like power, empowerment, confidence, right? And the one word kept coming back in front of me. I was like, nah, that can't be my word. That can't be my word. Because you know what? My word was detail. There is nothing... <laughs> powerful about the word detail and I was just like oh my gosh and everybody then everybody's sharing their words and going around the room and I was just like my word is neutral <laughs> right because at the time I was not very detail oriented I had a lot going on in my life and so I had a tendency to skim over things and not pay that much attention to the detail and I and I and I my whole excuse for myself was well they say the devil is in the detail right <laughs> So I don't need all that detail because the devil's in the detail. But you know what's in the detail too? Sometimes the things that unlock what you're trying to do are in those minute details that you need to pay attention to and grab onto. And so that year was the year that I really tried to dial in a little bit more and look a little bit deeper and to just really get into the details of my business. And because I went so detailed, then by the end of that year, what I was able to accomplish was I was able to discern which were the important details and which were the ones I could kind of skim over, right? Because there are important details and then there are details that slow you down. And so I quickly realized like these are the ones that are slowing me down. So let's set those aside or delegate them to somebody else. And then the uh, and then the ones that were serving me, I stuck with those and I tried to enhance them in the next coming year. So that's the power of a word, right? So last year, my word was perseverance, right? Because I did, I needed to persevere. We had a lot of stuff going on and I needed to be that model of that for my entire family and for myself, right? For myself, we had a lot of stuff going on outside of Tupperware, but also in Tupperware. Let's be real. We've been through a lot over the last couple of years and I needed to persevere this year to make sure that I was going to be here for the years to come. And that's what my word was this past year. And I had it right there on, and I have a couple of my words. I, I made a collage last year of a, several of the different words. And another one was intentional was one year, right? Um, so this year, I'm not sure. And that's the other thing too. Once you're kind of starting to narrow down your word, it's okay if in the coming weeks, you're like, gosh, I'm not sure if that's my word because now I'm feeling a little bit more connected over here, right? Because I've gone all the way to the end of January when I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure because when I, I see and hear this word, it's not really like bringing me the focus that I need. So that might not be my word. And, and I've changed my word at the end of January, right? And so, um, so yeah, so right now, I think my word is move because I need movement. I need movement in my body. I need movement in my life. I need movement in my business and I need some stuff to move out of a house. Okay. <laughs> 
need to declutter. All right, but that's, that's either here or there. But I'm just telling you, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And I'm just going to keep, you know, meditating on this word and just like marinating in it, seeing if it fits right, right? But that's what you can do. So don't be afraid about it or don't be afraid of it and talk about it. Talk about it to your upline, talk it out about it to your, your TFF, right? Your Tupperware friend forever. And you guys can mastermind together and figure out what the exact precise word is for you and your business in 2024. So-